The evidence is here. Our planet is indeed being visited by intelligences greater than man's. They travel in spaceships, in flying saucers. The evidence is overwhelming that planet Earth is being visited by intelligently controlled extraterrestrial vehicles. In other words, some UFOs are somebody else's spacecraft. There are no good arguments against UFO reality if we consult the evidence. Stanton T. Friedman, nuclear physicist and lecturer, has been consulting the evidence on UFOs for over 15 years. Uh, there was some, some kind of craft, you know, it was it looked like it's going to come out onto the ground. But it, it came on down and hovered about, oh, about a foot and a half or, or two feet off of the ground. But we didn't know what to do, you know. I, uh, the river behind us and, and uh, that out there not knowing what it was so and then before we uh, had time to really do anything it seemed like an open appeared you know, and toward the end it was you know toward us. and the blue light had it had blue flashing lights it was you know approaching the ground but then they went out and when the opening appeared some source of light came from the inside it was just almost blinding at approximately 15 minutes to 10 Monday evening, several citizens from the East Los Angeles area phoned our station and stated that, that they were observing what they thought was an unidentified flying object. After receiving several of these phone calls, Officer Winecoop and I were dispatched into the East Los Angeles area to investigate these possible sightings. We observed the object traveling in a southwesterly direction and gave pursuit of the object. While in pursuit, I was passenger officer and I was broadcasting a pursuit to my division watch commander, a Sergeant DeGroen of Hollenbeck Division, LAPD. During the pursuit, I managed to take one photograph. This photograph negative was booked into police property using this report and this uh, divisional record number. It did not have any dome like many of them have reported to have had and uh, it seemed to be about 200 feet in diameter and about uh, 30 feet high. Well, it was more of a uh, feeling than either sound or uh, sight. It was one of these things that uh, there was an extremely strong presence in the house and I got up, oh, I'd say it was one or two o'clock in the morning and began to look around the house. Uh, I searched all the rooms expecting to find a burglar, but uh, there was no one, uh, no one in the house, but a uh, very, very strong presence. There doesn't seem to be much doubt that UFOs are happening, that they are real physical objects occupying both physical space and time. But the data also implies that UFOs may not actually fly here over vast, enormous distances, but simply materialize here, function as physical craft while in our atmosphere, and then dematerialize. Professor J.H. Bruning of the University of Mississippi has pointed out how closely a UFO experience resembles a psychic event. In both instances, something that, according to the rigid rules of science, shouldn't be there, appears and violates the known laws of space and time and gravity. Ghosts and UFOs seem to have a lot in common. Ghosts materialize, seem to float or hover above the ground, often communicate telepathically, then dematerialize just like the reports of UFOs and their crews. These and other fascinating phenomena such as time loss, teleportation, and spontaneous healing are all associated both with occult and UFO experiences. And I'm inclined to agree with astronomer Alan Hynek who suggested that we may be dealing with an intelligence that knows more about the physical world than we do, more about the psychic world, and is using it all. They had me uh, one on this arm like this, and on the other one, you know, they had my other arm like that. And they just, I just seemed to lift up to the same height they were off the ground, and, and we just moved into the crowd. Now inside, how did they, how did they lay you out? Do you remember how it happened? Um, uh, yes, uh, they, I didn't see any tables or chairs or anything mm -hmm. in there. I'm, I'm not saying it wasn't in there because the light was almost blinding, but I didn't see any. And when they, when they carried me inside, they seemed to, to just lean me back, you know. And uh, this, this eye, well, I keep referring to it as an eye, it, it moved up the, in front of me about this close. Mm -hmm. And it started right at my eyes, looking right in the eye. Uh -huh. And it seemed to, it hesitated there for a, a, a few seconds. 
and it just started moving over my entire body. When they, they brought me uh, from the craft that put along this area here, and they seemed to, they didn't drop me, you know, they just released me back to the ground. And uh, I fell. I, I don't know why my, my legs were weak. I don't know why it was the fright or what it was, but I, I fell onto the ground. And that's when I seen Calvin. He's standing right over here in this area, and he was standing facing the river with his arms outstretched like that, just like he was staring at something. 